Hey there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips, and welcome to another video. Now recently I've been playing a lot with Nuvo Glimmer Paste, and I decided to kind of look into some ways to apply it, rather than just using a palette knife and a stencil. So today I came up with a fun and unique way to apply it to the surface, to get kind of a more flat look with lots of glitter still in it that won't rub off, and also you can kind of blend it into the white background, which looks really cool. So, without further ado, let's get right on into the video to create this fun background with Nubo Glimmer Paste. So here's a quick look at the card. It's got all that fun glitter on it, and then it fades out right into that white really nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'll start out with some purple tape, and I'm going to adhere down a card panel so it doesn't move when I'm doing my sponging. And then I'm going to take my purple tape and also adhere down this beveled diamond stencil from Nubo. And I'm going to adhere this on all four sides to make sure that it's nice and stuck down um, as I'm doing my stenciling here. So once I've stuck that stencil down, I can then start with my paste. So I'm taking this red paste here, and before we do anything, you want to make sure it's nice and mixed up, and that the glitter is all combined with the liquid that's inside of there. So once that's all nice and mixed up, I'll take my palette knife and some of the paste on top of it, and then I'll put that onto a nouveau sponge. Now these sponges are super dense, so what it's going to do is it'll take in a little bit of that liquid, but it'll leave all of the glitter sitting on top. So this allows you to go in and start dabbing that onto your stencil there, and you get tons of glitter on that surface with a lot less actual like product or liquid on there. It kind of, a little bit of it absorbs into that sponge. So you get a really cool effect in the end. You can see all that fun, shiny glitter on there. So it almost makes the paste a lot shinier by taking away some of the filler that's inside of it. So you can see as I'm applying it there, it's super shiny in the center. So I'm going to create a little circle kind of fading out as I want to put an image right in the center. And so this is kind of where its head will be. I want a lot of focus right on that because it's going to say um, I'm all ears. So I'm applying lots of that down and you could put layers and layers on. And as you do, it does get a little bit thicker. So it is going to be kind of a raised surface on your card, but it's not nearly as thick as it would be if you applied it down with a regular palette knife and smoothed it over the stencil. Now to clean this off, it's super simple. You can see all I had to do was just wipe it on the paper towel there and it basically goes clean. A lot of that glitter comes off and not a lot of the actual product absorbed into the sponge really. And then I'll just clear off my glass mat and my little palette knife by just wiping it off with some paper towel and it's super easy to clean it off. Now I'm going in with this second bluish purple kind of color here. I'm going to mix this around with the palette knife just as I had done before. And then I'll take it and like I did, apply it to my sponge. I'll use the same sponge here, there's no need for a new one. And then I'm going to start applying it to my project. Now instead of rubbing or doing it in circular motions, you want to just dab it onto the project. I find that that gives best results and it's not going to kind of move any of the product underneath the stencil. So you can blend both of the colors here and you can see lots of that glitter is applied down. This is a super shiny and sparkly card and the nice part about this is once you're done, none of the glitter comes off in your hands, which I'm a big fan of. I'm not a huge fan of glitter, especially when it comes off in your hands or your recipient's hands on the card. So having something that doesn't come off in this kind of paste form but not having to deal with the super thick background is really super nice. So I'm going to continue going around in my circle, just dabbing this right through the stencil. And you can kind of see as I finish it off here. You don't need a ton of product for this either. I just used a little bit for each ring and there's still tons of the paste left for more projects in the future. So as I'm dabbing this around to kind of finish it off and blend it into the background, I'm going to just dab it down into that white with some of the excess that's still on my sponge. Now this will just add some stray glitters kind of here and there into the background and really help blend it out and fade it into the white. And that's something you really can't do when you're using a palette knife either. So that's another really unique thing of applying this paste with the sponge. I think it's super fun way to do it and it's definitely really easy to do too. And again, just wiping off my sponge and it goes pretty clean. It's a little bit stained because of the dyes in those um, pastes, but otherwise you have a nice clean sponge you can keep using for the same technique. So now it's time for the moment of truth. Here is when I lift off my stencil. And again, there's a little bit of texture, but not nearly as much as you would normally have. So then after I'm done with that, I'll wipe off my stencil there. You can go in really harsh with some sponges or cleaners like that that'll really pull all that glitter off. I just, however, go in with a rag and don't really worry about it too much. 
Then here is my background. You can see that fun, awesome shine you get with that awesome glitter on there. You can see I applied lots of glitter with that paste and I think it created a really fun and unique background. And the good part about it too is it's pretty thin so it's like already dry. Okay, so now to finish off the card, I'm gonna apply this little fox and do some coloring here for you guys. So here I'm using this, I think it's called Fennec Fox. I might be wrong, but I'll link it down below. I really love these fun little images from Hero Arts, and these are super fun to color in. So I'm gonna stamp it down onto my cardstock using some Nubo Black Hybrid Ink. This is great for lots of different mediums and it won't bleed, but today I'm using colored pencils and Gamsol, so it's especially good for that. So I'm going to take my chameleon colored pencils. These are two tone colored pencils. So on each side it has a different color and this helps to kind of blend with them and you get really awesome shading because you know you have the lighter color on one side and the darker color on the other. Now I'm gonna use Gamsol in a second here. So really all you need to do is kind of scribble on a light layer of color on the bottom and then add in wherever you want your shading. So for my shading here, I'm going in with a lighter or a darker orange color and I'll just kind of shade in this box. And they've also drawn some lines in for you too on this image, which is super nice. So I'll just add some shading onto those little lined areas that are already drawn in. And I'll also add a little brown here and there on the fox to add even more extra contrast in this image. And it was super fun to color in. So once I'm done with that, I'll um, kind of go in with a medium tone and blend all that out and make it just a little bit darker there to add a little bit more contrast before we go in with our Gamsol. And then again, bringing in a little bit of brown to kind of make that fact kind of an orangey brown color because I don't want it to be too bright in the end. So once I'm done with that, I'm bringing in my Gamsol marker. Again, I'll have a link, a video linked in the top right corner here of how I created this marker, but basically it's an alcohol blending marker with Gamsol inside of it. I found those paper stumps a little bit tricky to work with, so this is a much easier way to use Gamsol to blend your color on your image. So I'm just going in here with the brush nib end of that marker. It gives you lots of control. And when you do this to colored pencil, it really kind of blends down that colored pencil and gives you a super smooth and awesome look. And it's got this fun brush nib on it so you can really control but get a nice wide space in it um, and color that all down. And it's almost like a Copic marker. So once I'm done with that, you could definitely use the dies to cut this out, but all I'm doing is just going around it and cutting with the scissors, just fussy cutting around the edge, leaving a little bit of a white border. If you guys are fussy cutting too, be sure to move the paper instead of moving the scissors and you'll get a lot smoother of a line in the end. So be sure to try that out. I know it really helped me. You can always practice fussy cutting these images. So after I'm done cutting that out, I'm going to adhere it onto the card. So I'm using foam tape to do this since I want to pop it up on the card. So I'm just ripping little pieces of foam tape and then um, kind of applying them in the back of the image. And this gives it really nice dimension and it comes on a big roll too, which is super nice. So after I'm done with that, I'm gonna take some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive and I'll take it and apply tons to the back of this foam tape. Now it might seem a little silly to apply this to the foam tape, it'll make the foam not really sticky. But when you add this liquid glue and when you add lots of it like this, it makes it easier to stick down to that glimmer paste and make sure that it's nice and stuck to that background. So it also gives a little bit of wiggle room too. Since it's liquid adhesive, you have a little bit of time to move it around if you don't love it. So I'm centering this little fox up right in the center of that background. Um, his head is kind of right in the center of the color that I created there. And I want that to be kind of the focal point of the image. So then I'm going to apply some white gel pen and I'm just doing this around some of those hand-drawn lines. And this just adds a little bit more extra detail to that image and creates a little bit more depth to it too. If you didn't love all the depth you did with your colored pencils, you can add a little bit more. So now I'm going to white heat emboss an image and I'm going to take the little sentiment that says I'm all ears and stamp it down onto some black cardstock with clear ink. And then I'll take some white embossing powder, sprinkle it over top and heat set that. So you get a really nice white crisp image. I love the look of heat embossing on black cardstock. It's so vibrant and gives a really awesome contrast. So the sentiment really stands out on the card. So after I've done that, I then cut it out into a little banner shape and put that right over its ears arched like that. That's how the sentiment was. And I think that looks really awesome like that. Now before we're finished with this card, I have these little star sequins. I think they're from Studio Katia and they're really awesome. They're kind of like holographic, really iridescent sequins. 
and I'm gonna just add these right all around my image to make it look kind of like a nighttime scene. That's kind of how I pictured this background when I created it. So I'm just adding those all around the card, making sure I love how they look. And then once I like how they look, I'm gonna take some of that Nouveau Deluxe adhesive, and again, use quite a bit of it, and apply those little stars down to the background. Now I'm using quite a bit, again, just to make sure that it applies down to that glimmer paste, and that it sticks really nicely once I'm done with it. And I really love how these stars look. I think I have to use them on some more cards. They are so much fun. So then after that, that's the finished card. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this and enjoyed that new fun background technique with the glimmer paste. I love how it fades out and how smooth it is. And that little fox too is super awesome and completes that background, I think. All right, so what'd you guys think? I hope you really enjoyed that video and enjoyed learning a new way to apply this paste. If you did, please leave this video a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And also be sure to click that subscribe button down below, as well as that little bell icon so you can never miss another crafting video like this one from me. Also, I would love to chat with you guys down below in the comments section. Let's chat about today's card. And I'll see you guys very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.